Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Boss, the technical trader at thetechtrader.com. Saturday, the 17th of June. This is the weekend webinar. Well, we had a really eventful, strong week that has gone pretty much up to target on several of the indices. Let's take a look at them. Uh, the S&P 500 tagged the top of the channel, and it's a fifth wave as well. One, two, and three, four, five. In addition to that, lateral price resistance across here might uh, but might create some additional upside resistance just above here. And there's a chance that if the market can momentum, you know, it catches momentum, it could extend into the 45, 600 zone. But for me, we're overbought enough now, and I'll show you some other stuff that indicates we should back and fill or pull back and do some retesting uh, with support now at 43.50 and 4,200 in that range. Now that's the S&P. And the X even stronger. And by the way, I just wanted to point out that we came down at five waves, dropping from 48 plus down to a 35 and change. Let's say we lost 1,200 points. And we gained back about 900. So um, the bottom line is that we've recovered and we've done about a 0.746 Fibonacci retracement as well. Uh, there's, you know, again, there can't be an extension, but we got to be um, extra careful up in this range here. In terms of the market, not only is there summer doldrums and, you know, this is one of those time periods where, especially for semiconductors, well, we see them run up into this time frame. And we'll show you that a little later. Okay, so NDX, what a move from 16,000, I think it was 600. Let's see, the spike high here was. The actual high was November 22nd, just before Thanksgiving in 21, 16.764. Ultimate low was 10.4. So we lost 6,300 points. We did it in one, two, three, four, five wave declines. Then we popped up and bounced, popped up and bounced from the triple bottom, broke out and flagged, and then took off and flagged again. It does look like a one, two, three, four, five wave advance. The fifth wave accelerating towards the double top we had in early of 22. So this is a logical place where the market should back and fill or back off and consolidate like it did there or there. Can we go higher? Yeah, if we get across, you know, if we have any kind of momentum here, we might get up to 15.5, 15.7 zone. I wouldn't bet the farm on it. And right now, look, I prefer a pullback consolidation, something of that nature over the next couple, three weeks to get the market consolidated enough for even higher levels. But any move underneath, say, 14.2, 800 points down, could get us much deeper to save 13 six for starters. You got to be really careful up here. We've had a pretty nice run. Simple as that. What didn't, uh, and what, one of the things that always has bothered me in this rally is there was no confirmation from the transportation index. You can see that the um, all time high, that spike high that occurred back in 18246 on November the 2nd of 21, then had a one, two, three, four, five wave decline. It formed an inverse head and shoulders, broke out, but pulled back, platform that broke out again. Now you have to take, draw that back this way and show that this could be a one, two, three, four, and the fifth wave just starting, or will it be truncated? Well, if the markets in general are going to back off, this may very well just get sloppy in here. We don't know yet. Transportation stocks might, might not do that well, but be watching them carefully. And also, small caps, well, they had... A little, a little bit of a nice pop finally, but they were really, really trailing. The big, big key resistance is 200. We only got up to 188 this week. So really, pretty much a shortfall and uh, a trailer. On the plus side, if you look back to May, June of 22, last year, one year ago, it's from the one-year base pattern. However, you're going to need to get this up across here. It's over 200 to get a real move going in small caps. So, I mean, this may back and fill and extend the base, oh, and so might the transportation index while the um, NASDAQ 100 and S&P 500 back off and consolidate. That's what, what kind of what I'm looking for, but one thing I'll, I'll counsel everybody that the market always goes further than you think it's going to and, you know, and, and always drops further than you think it's going to drop. Same thing with individual stocks. Uh, so let's take a look at the underlying technicals. One of the reasons why, look, the market underlying breadth has not been good. 
and it's reflected in the oscillator. Hang on a sec. Okay, so I'll get it eventually. So here's the oscillator. You can see that upper range is always around 200 to 20 to 50. That's where we're really overbought. Oversold is around 250 as well, give or take 20, 30 points. We've gotten down to 300. Look, if you take a look at this drop back here, way back here, well, back down, and we've seen readings 400 to 450. But I'm looking at more, majority of oversold gets you near 300 to 280. Overbought catch up around 200 to 250. Right now we're plus 49, kind of neutral. A lot of that's reflected in the fact that the oscillator is comprised of advanced declines and up down line. What that tells me is this has been a narrow advance led by certain stocks, particularly semiconductors um, and, uh, and others, of course. But for the most part, um, a, a weaker market internally. So that's why one of the reasons you got to be careful up here when prices on NASDAQ 100 have been advanced to a level up here. And we've had a big run at S&P as well. With underlying technicals showing that the, uh, with the oscillator, not overbought. You would think the oscillator now would be upwards of you know, 180, 220, but it's not. And that's because of the internal aren't that strong. The One of the things I watch is the percentage of stocks above the 40-day moving average. Well, that's gotten up in the 60s. That's good, but still only um, something like five out of eight stocks are above the 40. There's still a good portion of stocks that aren't participating. Um, but you can see the V bottom with the platform at the top. Now, you don't really chart an oscillator that way or an index, but it's overbought or oversold. We're certainly closer to overbought. Is it extreme? No, it's not. We'd like to see 75 to 85. The VIX, really not indicative of what's going on. Perhaps more indicative of the, with you, you saw the article I posted this weekend about investor sentiment. It's at a multi-year high. Uh, which means we're too bullish, which means more apathy, less, less people less scared of the market. Up here is fear, up here is that, down here is apathy. We're getting in that zone, but we've seen lower levels, even at high single digits before this thing gets to a point where it indicates a really bad, um, or dangerous zone for the market. We're not quite there. It doesn't mean we can't bounce, uh, come down hard from here and have this thing bounce dramatically into the high 20s, low 30s, but. The jury's still out on what, what this market's going to do. I can only go from a price standpoint, and we are extended price-wise, at least on the NASDAQ and S&P. All right, so there's a look at the technical. Now I want to look at some of the components we watch closely. I just mentioned the SMH or the semiconductors. Take a look at this run we've had at a one, two, three, four, five. And actually, if you look at it, it's more like seven waves down. But more importantly, to come from this level, break that trend, retest it and they go up in a one, two, three, four, five wave advance on the semiconductors uh, with the multi-year all time highs there, 159. Uh, we just got up to 156 and change. So we're pretty close to um, extremely, um, what I would call a uh, strong overhead resistance up here. So there's a lot of things that are indicating to us that the markets can come down here. Uh, there are also the possibilities that we can still extend a little bit. But we're in dangerous territory. We need to kind of relax, come down, do some kind of consolidation at the very least, or even get a deeper retrace then. You know, sometimes it starts out and then you never know what it's going to ex exacerbate and get really weak. The big key support for me is the SMH. It's something you should watch. There's 143 and the, uh, over here about 134. So 143, 134 are key levels going forward on support for the SMH. What about biotechs? Well, the XBI and the LABU are doing this. Um, they had a nice base. They ran up to resistance. They couldn't get through. We got another test of that resistance zone this week. And you can see this declining top sign, unable to get through it. If it does, we could get a biotech blowout. But right now, the key support on the X. Uh, XPI is down around 83, 84. The LABU, which a lot of us follow, similar but not as strong. And you can see that although it did 
peek his head up above that chronic top line, it didn't really get to the level of resistance, which comes in up here. So uh, this is also trailing a bit. And with the interest rates going the way they are, the FAS and financials just haven't followed the suit. They barely bounced and it's still below resistance. So one big concern for the market is how the financials are acting up here. And you can see the long-term decline channel is still in vogue, in play. That's what it looks like. If there's any moment, if this is a big one, two, and this is a three, or even a four, we could have one more leg down if the market does roll over. Financials could lead the way down. I don't think that's the case, but you never know when they have a financial crisis. Anyway, let's look at the semiconductors, biotechs, and financials, three leading groups that I follow closely. This is not warming the cockles in my heart, as they say. FAS. Other ETFs of note, gold and silver. Well, I don't know what the play is with gold and why everybody's excited about it. I like the GLD. And what I like about it is it looks to me like a long term one, two, three, four. Right now, you're near a support level that if it holds, you could have GLD go up to about 205. Wouldn't that be a nice pop for that GLD? But some of the ETFs. The GDX, it looks the same, but it's vulnerable, meaning that if we get any further downside damage of both of these, they could crack the entire trend. So we are looking for a bounce here. Um, if the markets come down, gold might ver do very well. Something to look forward to in the next few weeks and months ahead if, if we have a lousy market. Looking at Nugget and JNUG, same thing. All of these have four wave advances. One, two, three, four. And they're right on the trend lines. So again, this is a key, key, key area for precious metals. And silver, um, it's a little bit even better, quite frankly, because the this pullback came at a higher low. So something tells me, and this is just a gut feel, that if and when precious metals go, that silver may lead. So AGQ could be interesting to 40 and 46 in the next few months. There's other silvers. I'm not going to go over all of them right now, but I just wanted to show you that real quickly. How about oil? Well, the USO um, is still in a long downtrend. And I say a one-year downtrend because this has gone from 90 to 60. And it's kind of sloppy in here. Um, you can see where the key resistance is up there and likely right there. 66, 68, and 72 are here. Resistance zones on the USO. And you can see that multiple lows at 60. Should they get below that for some reason, we go lower. Probably down in the mid 50s. UCL, same. And what about Gush? Well, it's similar as well. You take a look at Gush, and that's why I've been negative on oil. I just don't see any reason to be bullish yet until we get at least this decline top line taken out. So you want to gush, and if gush gets back above 123 with any kind of real energy, it could go to 135, 150, et cetera. But right now, the decline top sign rules, and it tells me if we go down and take out, look, look at these four or five bottoms down to 100. If you drop through 100, you might see 80. If that happens, obviously, oil will be dropping into the 50s, if not worse. Again, um, a long, long consolidation with downward slope on um, oil. And let's look at gas too. KOLD took a turn down. Looks like we may have found some kind of bottom in that gas, multiple tops in the high mid 90s, 92 area, not 1992, and now a bit of a rollover. And while that's going on, UNG which we, is taking a move from about under six to seven and a quarter. And for me, the highest level achieved in the last three or four months was 7 to 72. We get through that 70, 72, 90 zone. We could see a move to nine or better. Uh, on boil, some of you could be obviously like, by the way, boil's going to do a reverse split. So it's going to literally be 60 bucks. It's going to one for 20 reverse. So I would, again, I just don't, unless, it was, look, if it, I, it's going to reduce our leverage by a lot. So I would still stick with on for now. Right, that's enough on the ETFs for now, for the uh, ma major uh, exchange-traded funds that we follow, following the groups that we follow.
Lots of individual stocks to talk about today. We'll start off alphabetically as we usually do with AAOI, a semiconductor which has just taken off dramatically in the last three, four weeks from one and three quarters to just about five, 499. You can see the momentum, it's been up every day for about two weeks. Is it overbought? You betcha. But did it break out? Indeed it did. So my, my, my point being now is that there's a long-term resistance level here. We might see a little extension to the five and a quarter, three eighths range, but this is overbought. Love to see a consolidation, setting up a nice trend, and maybe a trade into the nine range at some point. Last week, ABCM took off. They like day traded a couple times. 1570 to 2270, seven points in the last couple of weeks, and a nice one, two, three. But short term overbought at resistance. And maybe we get a little momentum follow through to 24, but be real careful with this one. I would look for a consolidation setup. ACHR, junior aerospace companies like Archer and, J and uh, Joby and a few others have had done very well of late. And you can see the long-term decline on this one. Took this from the high teens down to literally a buck and a half. What was the low on Archer? 162. Then it retested, formed the base, wedged, broke out, and spiked the resistance and backed off. I would look for a wave four consolidation and maybe break out to six, seven at some point. Biotech's software stocks doing well, and in this case, it's ACVA software company with a long one, two, three, four, five wave decline, a nice base, a breakout wedge, a pop long flag, and a mini wedge. Breakaway gap, rising flag. I mean, it's solid, really solid, good looking chart. Momentum target 2021. Maybe 22. Great looking chart. ADMA, how about that for great looking? It's a biotech stock. It's gone from one to four, and now it's forming a little wedge above resistance. Now, I don't know how far they can take it, but my target is five and three quarters, six. Looking pretty intriguing. AEHR, what a move in the last year after this one. After dropping down under seven, it made it into the low 40s, actually 44 and a quarter. But it wasn't a good day for it. It dropped 278, and it's on initial support from the prior highs. Also, there's a trend line coming in Ooh, right about there. I think that's about where it is. So we're going to watch this carefully because anything above 44 and change is stock of rocket. Problem is, it's a very volatile stock. It can go either way. AI, well, you know what's going on with AI. Everybody likes to trade this stock, and we've traded it very successfully several times. But for now, I'm watching it carefully. And the reason I am is because it's already gone from 16 and change here, 1679, spiked up to 44, came down hard to 31, and went right back to new high 47, 4887. Wow. Well, my target now has to be upwards of 53.4 if it does keep going. And the hard stop for me now is going to be on the 43. 90.44, and it's right there. So you may want to give yourself a little leeway. It's still strong momentum. AMAM still flagging for the last three weeks after breaking out. I like the look of it. If it gets above 15, looking for 18 and 21, 22. AMPH with a big week last week. It's a beautiful one, two, three, four, five wave advance over the last three years, taking it from like 11, 12 into the mid to high 50s. You can see the spike up it had the last couple of days. Um, extended, yeah, momentum could carry a little bit further. APLD, beautiful base, breakaway gap, spike up. That was a tech trader swing. It's platforming or flagging now. I'm looking for APLD to take out 10 and a quarter, get up to 13 and 16. APLS is consolidating now for a few weeks. Didn't have a good day Friday. It was down, no, not, not bad. Uh, but I think the key is going to be, this could be a huge number. We're hearing some big things from this company. But let's just say that uh, technically we need 94 and a half taken out. The target set are about 108.9 and then 118.20. APP broke out with a breakaway gap from the little flag and popped again. Got to a, a resistance zone at about uh, 25 and three quarters and then backed off. Held the gap. It's bouncing back again. 
Just keep an eye on this window over 25, 75, 80. I've been looking for 29. APYX, similar pattern. Um, long decline, 16 down at one and change, and then popped up and coiled. The breakout occurred here. The rising flag or channels on the way, targeting eight and a half and 10. ARGT, one, two, three, four, a fifth wave's underway. It broke out and flagged in a pop. This was an important day for it, Friday. Up at dollar 94, 4% on, on a fairly ugly day in Wall Street. I think the stock advances into the 50 52 zone. Arlo, base, breakaway gap, pop wedge, pop flag, pop another coil, target 11 and 13. And Amera, we nailed the swing on this one after it popped across the 50 and ran dramatically up from in the 6 7 zone up to almost 11. And it came down and bounced and came down. And it's got this pattern now that. Is a little suspect. And the reason I say suspect is I, when I look overall, Adamera has a nice wedge. But this little pattern in there is a bear flag potential, and I'm always concerned about that. Right on the bottom of that pattern, so a breakdown could get you quickly down to seven three quarters eight. Be careful with this one. The targets, however, if it does pop with volume, is in a ten and a half three quarter range, and then we're looking at thirteen. AVDL, I, know, I noted this one a year ago when it went pop, flag, pop, flag, pop, five waves. Then came down, and slowly started in advance to took it from four and change into the mid teens, tagging 1578. Now you can see the multi week coil. And what it's going to need is 15 and a half, targeting then 18 to 19. AXSM, hearing good things about this one too. Multiple tops pop through. And then kind of a consolidation day on Friday, near flat. Once it gets above 86, I'm looking for 92, 99, and eventually 110. Azul, some of the South American Airlines have done very well. This inverse head and shoulder broke out right there and just kept running. And I like to look at this, targeting 16. BTBT in, in the Bitcoin realm uh, slower than a lot of the stocks in that group. Not sure exactly why, but you can see a beautiful chart on the way, and it's made a new 52-week um, high on Friday, targeting now four and a half, three quarters, five and three quarters, six. Kaba, a big, big run from September of last year uh, when it was trading literally at 59 cents. It made it by February. No, 13. That pulled down and popped and pulled down and popped again. It's got an ascending bull coil. With that kind of a move, we can see a big move coming with 16 and 18 as starter targets. CARG, um, nice downtrend. Spike bottom with a tail. Breakout flag pop coil. Breakout again, we're at resistance. Watch this one across 2270. Then you target 26. CCL looks like it may be up for sale, but uh, this inverse head and shoulder either way broke out and the stock ran hard from the 10 and a half range into the almost 16 and a half. Yeah, a six point run at resistance, however, may need to consolidate. Next target, however, 19. CGNT tech trade a swing, pop, put a flag on it, and then I said, let's swing it. It never broke down, but it took a while to consolidate and finally broke out, going from four. To six oh seven, so about a fifty percent pop. My target is now seven seven and a half. Cocoa Vita or Vita Cocoa, what a great looking chart. Seven thirty nine to thirty. This is three hundred percent gains just since November, and new all time high. So you don't know how far they're going to take it, but it looks pretty darn strong, doesn't it? Cohr, look at that run. Exploded out of a five wave decline, one, two, three, four, five waves down with a spike, pop, retest, and then take off. Flag, explode. Literally gone from 27 to 56, nearly 30 points. It's now at lateral resistance up in that zone, so it may be tough. We may need to consolidate, pull back, retest. If it blows through, 70 is your target. Kohu, coming out of a base pattern that's lasted uh, two years now. And nice day on Friday, jumping 187. To me, it looks like the target has to be up around 50, 51. 
CRNC, after a big drop from the 130, 40 range down to the mid teens, it popped and consolidated and now it's broken back out. You can see multiple tops across here, targeting 38 at 45. CXAI, another AI stock with a pop wedge, pop coil, right at the apex. Keep an eye on this one. The pops with energy over 12 and a half, because E15 and 18. The uh, Dactronics, nice rising channel underway, strong trend, target eight and a half. DraftKings Tech Trader swing, popped, going back and consolidated, held at 50 twice, ran up. And I said a beautiful rising channel as well. I'm now looking for 30 at 32. ELF, one of the stars of the year, no, kid, no question. From June of last year, in the last 12 months, it's gone from 20 to 108. 20 to 108, more than fivefold. Does it look done to you? No, it looks like it's flagging. Unbelievable, but the next target is going to be 120, 22. ELTK thinly traded, but a pop coil, wedge, pop, and a rising channel. Now looking for 11 and three quarters, 12 in your next target. Support, eight and a half. ENVX breaks out of a wedge this week, especially on Friday when it jumped to about 35 or 10%. There's some resistance right here. Do we get through that though? I'm looking for 17 and a half and 19. EOSE, nice base is built in the last year. That's at resistance. Should it get through here? Your target's 490. And six and a half. EPOW, nice little base after a drop, popped up and it's got a platform. It looks like the kind of stock that if it gets to three, three or five, my targets are three and a quarter, three and three quarters and four and a quarter. This is a personal position of mine. ETNB, beautiful long term rising channel. This biotech has gone from two to 23. My target now is 278. Nice. Base breakout and rising flag on VLV, if it does extend, which I think it might, uh, seven and three quarter target. EXTR. Well, you can see the long term rising channel it gives us a target upwards of 33, 34. It does look terrific. It's broken out of a nice consolidation zone. And it's done it with some energy down here. So looking for an extension or a pullback retest first. FDMT is one of my top 20 picks of the year. I just like the way it's starting to move back up again, but it did back off resistance later in a week, and it's at minor support here. Next target is 25 and three quarters and 29. FNGR, the new tech trader swing I put on when I broke two. I jumped to 270 and backed off, um, closed to 220. Up about eight and a half percent on Friday, but if this gets through today's high, two, or Friday's high two seventy, I'm looking for four and a quarter. I think we may get it. Look at that run in September. GSIT with an explosive move and a wedge. We put a swing on it, then popped, flagged, and popped again. Friday's high was a new high at nine eighty. Uh, we get we get through that. I can see the stock at eleven and a half and even thirteen. <clears throat> Up next is here. Triple bottom base breakout wedge or coil. It's come down a bit here, so we got to hold support, which now is $10. But your targets are 13 and 50 if it runs. HLIT, beautiful rising channel all year. One, two, three, four, five waves up, but this looks like a one, two, and three. Uh, three may not be done, but, but it is at the top of the channel. If it accelerates here, I'm looking for 20. A KNA, junior biotech running. Breaking out of a wedge Friday. Nice pattern, targeting nine and 11. IMGN, tech traded swing, breakaway gap and a flag. We put a swing on it, then went from about 12 and a half, 13, all the way up to 19 and a quarter on Friday. We have reached my targets. It is extended, but boy, momentum is strong in this one. Might see 22, 24. IMTX. A little inverse head and shoulder breakaway gap, pop and flag. We noted that several times in the last few weeks. It then popped again. It's made it up to test the September multi-year highs. There is resistance up here. The breakthrough could get you in the mid-teens. INOD, surge, one, two, three, four, five waves, and then a pullback. And now another run-up. It made it all the way up to 1283. <coughs> this is a tech swing thing. Very well indeed. New all-time highs. 
I think mid-teens may be at INTA, beautiful rising channel, and it broke out last week and flagged. I think it's going to be mid-50s, maybe low 60s. INTC, a tech traded swing we put out here and then backed off, but boy, did it come on strong here. Pop wedge and pop. This is a new um, seven or eight month high on it. The gap and that snapback, 37.65.70 is near term resistance, but I think it gets through and gets up to 40 and then 44. IONQ, a one, two, three, four, five wave move has been followed by a nice consolidation. It may not be done yet, but it does have to get through the 11 and a half wave area with energy. The index target is 14. IOT, Internet of Things broke out. We put a swing on it, it didn't have that. Popped again, pulled back and tested. Popped again, flagged, broke away with a gap, ran up sharply. Um, just in the last couple of weeks, it's gone from 18 to 31. And I don't know if it's done yet, but it has had a nice move. Momentum is very strong on its next target, 33, 34. Joby, nice trade, inverse head and shoulder. It broke out. We put a swing on it right there. It was four and three quarters. Friday's high, eight, 12. So a nice swing already. It's overbought. May need to consolidate in this range. There's some lots of resistance here. However, if it gets through here, ten dollars is your target. Coping a beautiful one-year base, a breakout, and a wedge. Ideally, we break that wedge, we could see this thing pop at three and four, four and a quarter. That's a tech trader swing as well. Low priced. Laser, nice base, breaking out Friday. Watch this one for a move to high teens. LI, my favorite Chinese EV manufacturer. Pop, we put a swing on it, it flagged and then extended. So far, it's gone from mid 20s to mid 30s. Uh, there is some resistance up here in the mid in 36 range, but the next target is 40. LMB has been in a wonderful rising channel for a year now, or less since last August, from five and a quarter to 24, and it's not done yet. Momentum could carry this one to high 20s. LSPD broke out. We put a swing on it and backed off, and I think it goes to 18 and 20. I like the look. Base pattern developing. MOR breaks out and just keeps running. It's uh, it's somewhat thinly traded, but it's certainly a, a, an important high in here and it may extend it to the nine to 10 range. MRVL in the semiconductor group, beautiful base, breakaway gap and wedge, just looks like a tech trade swing for me. Targeting 68 and 75. Enable, nice base, pop coil, pop falling wedge and pop lateral coil. So, I don't know if it's multiple waves up or done yet, but I think based on what I'm seeing, this goes to 17. Neo, nice one, two, three, four, five, but I think that this is more of a one, two, three, and then a one, two, three. So for me, this flag is critical and holds here. My targets are 20 and 24 if it does go. And the OG with a falling uh, wedge or a coil breaks out, hesitates, and pops right to the prior high. Your next target is 23. NERV, tech traded swing, popped out, wedge, spike to the target, coiled. Keep an eye on this one. If it holds that coil without breaking out, without breaking down, I should say, then I would look for something around 13, 14. That could be a big winner. It's been looking good to me. Uh, Nanox breakaway pop pulled back, we put a swing on it. It went from nine and change, nine and three quarters, where I think we put it out, or maybe ten and a half. But it went to 22, folks. It's pulled back, but it's in a rising channel. My next target is 23 and 26. Nutanix breakaway gap out of a long falling wedge. And now a beautiful close developed. Keep an eye on this one, talking at 31 to 34. Nvidia. Popped, we put a swing on it immediately. It then went from about 368 or wherever it was to 437. I don't think it's done yet. 455 and 475 type targets. Navitas, junior semiconductor. Breaks across the triple top here, pulls back, tests, and, re and, and goes again. At this point, I'm thinking we go back up to about 11 and 3 quarters, 12. That's my next target. OPRA, one of the stronger charts we've seen all year. How about from under four to 21, almost 22? 
um, and it's now accelerating. So we can see mid to high 20s on this one. Just keep stops in place, keep raising your stops. Oscar with a one, two, three, four, and fifth waves underway. I, I see at least 10 and a half to test here, and maybe we get it up to about 14. PETQ, long decline, popped off, consolidated, broke out, wedged, and popped again. I'm now looking for a move that tests this gap area, which is right where, where it is, and then 18. So 18 is my target for PETQ. Plant uh, pellets here, big run, pop, breakaway, pop, wedge, break out, run up. This is a textured swing as well. It's actually great. Um, if it gets to 17 and a quarter, it might see 19.20. PPSI, love this chart. Beautiful base, exploded. Perfect wedge, breakout, mini flag, and breakout. Um, to me, nine and 12 type targets. RCEL had a nice chart pattern, then it broke down. But it held that gap. Angle now changed. It looks like this now. And this. So what I'm doing on this one now is giving you a target upwards of 21. RMTI. Um, base, breakout, wedge, pop on Friday, targeting six. ROIV, one of my top 20 picks. You can see I was edging up towards the high for the year, uh, 52 week high. Next targets are. 12 and 15. SDA, huge pop, big drop, held support at the moving average. It's moved up nicely. It's been up for, uh, for the last five days and seven of the last nine. Friday's pop through the resistance. My target now, um, 30 and 35. SDGR, great chart, rising channel, popped through it on the wedge and broke out. Very nice pattern. There is resistance right up right where it is, but if it follows through, 53.4 target. SCRA, breakaway gap with explosive move, but over the last three months, it's been just drifting in a falling channel until this week when it popped out on Friday. Let's keep our eyes on this one. If there's anything above Friday's high, this thing can take off. Targeting four and three quarters, five and a half. Semiconductor SGH, so that says Smart Global Holdings. Breaks out and runs, gets the resistance and blows through it. This has got great momentum. Looking for a move now to 20, uh, 30 and 34. Shopify, tech traded swing, looking real good. I think if it gets through the highs of the week of 67 and a quarter, 72 and 77 are targets. SOFI, look at that run. It's had a good pullback. This one vertical from 445 in about Two and a half, three weeks at 10.23. So um, a 130% run. Now the pullback. Nice base pattern, though. So any consolidation in this zone, maybe a setup for a move to a low and then mid teens. So UN wedge breaking out Thursday and Friday, then backed off. There is an extension. The target's four and a half and five and a quarter. SOXL is a function of the semiconductors and it is overbought but through here it could spike into the low 30s still I'm looking for a pullback Spotify nice rising channel at resistance we get through here we're looking for higher levels 190 and 220 SQSP base breakout pullback wedge and the Friday announced the deal with Google to buy some of their assets stock popped I think it's got more to go there is resistance right there though should we get to the high on Friday of 32 and 34 and a half, I should say? Looking for high 30s. SSYS in play and maybe taken over, but you can see the inverse head and shoulders and some backing and filling here. Um, I think that you're going to see 21 to 25 on a takeover, so that's why I haven't taken a look at that one. STNE, a South American software company, big base, breakout, and a wedge. Looking for uh, 16 and 18 on this one. There's only a wave one, two here. Let's look for three. SYM is as strong as anything we've seen this year. Eight three quarters to 52, just since November. And accelerating. Don't know how far they can take it. It's in blow up mode. Be careful. Tabula. <coughs> when it popped and wedged here, I liked it. It then ran up nicely. And then it came down hard in a falling wedge and into this gap, basically filling it. Okay, 
and it popped with a wedge and it's formed another wedge. This year is very similar to this year with a pop breakaway gap and a wedge. And look what happened after. I'm looking for the same thing here. This should be a tech trade of swing. Above 340, I'm looking for four and a half and five and three quarters. Technical glass, the tech trade swing swing since last year. Uh, when I was trading in the high 20s, made it into the high 40s. On Friday, it tagged 49 and a quarter. There's resistance there. My next target is 55. TGTX, multiple waves up, maybe extended, but it did pull back. I just don't want to see this thing break here. So it'd be prudent to have a tight stop on it. And if it does run, 33 and 38 targets. TRHC, a little junior biotech that had a really bad time of it for a while, dropping from the 70 range down to the $2 range. Popped, based out, coiled. Here's your break out of the coil. And a run up pullback. I'm looking for more, nine and 10. Uber, I've been high on Uber since it broke out here and then pulled back. It's gone from 29 to 44, almost. My target was here at 45, and the next target is 49. Upstart, been phenomenal, great momentum. Just don't know how far they can take this before it comes down. It's that resistance here. Next target is 50, 52, if it continues, Pull back to 32, 33 wouldn't surprise me either, <clears throat> especially if the market pulls back. Uh, VIPS run up, long base breakout, resistance right about where it is. If you get through that, we're looking for low 20s. Vista oil and gas, but phenomenal from 2 to 24, and still looks like it's going higher. Very hard to tell how far based on this, but it is an all time high. And so careful on that one. Make sure you have stops in place. Viking, a tech traded swing when it had a breakaway gap, pop and coil. It was right about there in the nine, eight, three quarters, nine and a quarter zone where we put it out as a swing. It made it up to 25 and three quarters and it's coiling or consolidating it here. Should it break back out again? I think it might. I'm looking for 35, 38. BRT, furtive breaks out of a base with a breakaway gap and just keeps running. Beautiful chart. Test of that area near 27 might be in, in order. Voyager, really nice looking biotech stock. Pop, long coil, pop, another one, old support right there, explodes, backs off, forming a wedge in here. Take a look. This wedge, I think, is indicative of higher levels. And once it gets to 1435, this may be somewhere in the high teens, 1718. XPEV, the other electric vehicle manufacturer. It's got a nice base pattern. I want to show it to you. It hasn't quite the same uh, energy or breakout as Lee does, but still wants you to see XPEV because I think that will make a run. And when it does, 14 and 18 are targets. YEXT with a big pop a week ago and now flagged. Something's up here. It looks pretty strong. Uh, I got a target of 15 and 18. YPV with a pop rising flag, pop coil, then it dropped down, but it held that line, didn't it? Formed a coil. Broke out last week. My target is 18. And finally, Zuo, after a long decline, the software stock popped up, pulled back, and broke out. Breakaway gap, and now a little flag in here. Targeting uh, 12 and 3 quarters and 15 eventually. Let's take a look at some shorts. It's a very short list. I'll be working on that this weekend. For now, though, um, we're looking at these stocks and these stocks only on my box of shorts list. Oil stocks in general, I think. Uh, what not contrary to what everybody else thinks, look pretty negative to me. APA with a bear wedge, and, and essentially a one, two, three, four, five, and that's a one, two, three, four, and I'm looking for another wave down, especially for breaks 30. AZPN is a new tech trade swing short. It broke down hard and has a bear coil. Simple as that. Targeting 148.50 and 138.40. CPRI, negative pattern. <laughs> it was a tech traded swing when it dropped down from the bear coil and look what it did since then. 50 to 34 has another bear wedge here. My targets are 33 and 30. DG kind of hammered. It's trying to snap back, but is it a buy here? But we'll see. I got resistance up here. I don't know how far they can take it before it rolls back over. Eventually though, 137.8 is my target. 
D-I-N-O, a nice run back up to the declining top sign. And it might be dangerous if you're short because it's above for a week now, above the 50, which bothers me. So careful, and I would cover this one over 47. But if it does roll over and take out 44, I think we could see back to 41, 37, and even down the mid-30s. EPAM, stair step, stair stepping is way lower. Bear flag, run up to resistance and fill that little gap. Fail, breakaway that gap, and then bear flag. I'm targeting 191, 175. Plur, breaks down, forms a bear flag, and then breaks down again. Now it's got a three wave corrective. So again, this is similar to what I just showed you. I need a breakdown here quickly. It had a negative reversal day on Friday, I think. Now this one has to come down on the 28. Then I'm looking for 26 and 24. Guidewire, a new tech trader swings short as it broke its channel with a breakaway gap below the moving average, and then has formed the bear flag. I don't like the look of this. Look at the volume on Friday. And I know it was option expirations, but if this cracks 69 and a half, we're going to look for 65 and 61. MASI also broke a trend, came down with a gap, snapped back to it, and rolled over. It's got a bear wedge. A break of 155. And we could see 142 and 130. NFE, um, after a long decline, may be bouncing in here. So you have to stop this one over 31 and a half, three quarters. But a breakdown could lead to lower levels in the mid and low 20s. PBH came down, had a rising wedge. We put a, a tech trade swing short. We went from 63 down to 53 and then popped. I still think if it rolls over here, you're going to see uh, low 50s and high 40s. PI, big drop, and a big rising bear flag. It broke down from that level. And it's in danger of, you know, much bigger move to the downside. Looking for 78, 80, and then we'll see where it goes from there. VTLE was a tech trade swing short from back in here. At about 55, it dropped down into the 39 range, and now it's coiling. Looking for lower levels, 37 and 33. And finally, DVN. Also, an oil stock with a rising wedge and a rising bear wedge at that. Should it break that? 45, 42, and 39 are targets on the downside. Well, that's a look, folks, at the technicals, the markets, the indices, the major ETFs, the NASDAQ 100 generals, for the most part. Uh, I passed on because they all look the same. They're overbought. Let's do a quick look at them. Apple. You see it's at all-time highs, but just nominally so above the, the, that level, and it's extended. Amazon, also breaking out across the decline top line and across lateral resistance. Um, possible we extend to 135, 140, but again, any rollover over the recent pullback low is a stopping point. Stop under 120 for Amazon. For Apple, I would say the stop has to be under 177. Google, strong, but similar. Base breakout pop is a one, two, three, four. I'm not sure this is done yet, but you know, keeping in mind if the market comes down, this will too. So the Google stops under 120 as well, but the target's in the 133, 37 range. And Microsoft, I'm not going to go over all of them. I'll do a few. Microsoft, um, look at that spike to win. It tests its all-time highs, maybe a nominal new high. It did make a new high on Friday, reaching 351.80. But this is really extended. Nvidia and Tesla. <coughs> you can see that this one had room to run to maybe 460, 480, 475. But this is a tech trade swing. Nevertheless, a rollover on this one uh, can, cannot take out 395 range. Wait a sec. 365, sorry. But yeah, very good looking stock, extended. And finally, Tesla, what a move this has had. Um, it's a one, two, three, but right now we're up against resistance up here. Extension could take this in the high 200s to like 285 or so, but uh, you got to be really careful about last week's pullback low on Thursday at 247. Below that, Support is at the gap at 242. So 247, 242, important numbers next week for Tesla. Folks, that's it. Have a great rest of your weekend. Don't forget, we're closed Monday. Enjoy. This is HB wishing you well.
and thanks for being a tech trader. Bye, everybody.